Hi, my name is Dr. Darshini Ayton. I'm a Senior Research Fellow and Lecturer at the School of Public Health and Preventative Medicine. My research area related to healthy ageing in one sentence would be that it is all about avoiding harms for people who are hospitalised as older adults. So things like delirium, falls, how can we make sure we avoid and prevent any further harms and also support people in the transition home. It started in about 2016 doing data analysis and um, realised that there was this theme coming through on how hard it is to look after older people in hospital, not from a medical perspective, but providing that psychosocial support. So conversations, reminding people why they're in hospital, that they're in hospital, who the Prime Minister is, those types of things. And I started thinking about the fact that that doesn't actually require a nurse to be able to do that and that could be something that could be done by volunteers. And so um, I then started to look and see what other programs were around and I think the biggest breakthrough happened is that I stopped thinking in a siloed approach of anything that's health related has to be done by the health system and started actively looking for partners outside of the health system. So I partner very closely with BaptCare, who are a not-for-profit organisation who have lots of volunteers, do volunteer support and training, and by bringing them together with the hospital system are able to then support older people in hospital in a way that I don't think we could have done with our current resources. I am someone who has multiple health conditions and I spend a lot of time in hospital. So I've been an inpatient in hospital. And when I've been an inpatient in hospital as a young person, I get my friends who are delivering me Uber Eats. I have lots of people who are coming to visit me. And I remember this one moment where I was in a shared room with an older lady who was in her 70s. And after having a stream of visitors and she had had no one, that whole week, she turned to me and she said, you are so lucky to have people come and talk to you. And my heart just broke for her because I was just like, she had family and friends, but um, you know, some of them were unwell, they were busy, they weren't able to come into a metropolitan hospital. And that's when I really started thinking, well, how do we have people come talk to older people, um, provide them with some of that social support while they're in hospital, if that's not something that they have within their personal circles. So I think one of the things we want to really be able to highlight is that this area of research and partnering with organisations like BAPT Care, first of all, helps us do things in a multi-sectorial collaborative way. And I think that's only a good approach um, for some of our complex kind of health situations. The other thing is that we do tend to focus on very medical outcomes. So we focus on things like, oh, are these people coming back into hospital within 28 days? Are they having falls? Are they getting delirium? And all of that is important. And we are going to measure those outcomes and see what impact it has. But I think the number one thing I'm also interested in is the experience of care, quality of life. How do we um, support older people to feel like, yes, you matter and yes, we're investing in you. So I think it, there's impact on multiple levels. The support has been absolutely amazing. I've consistently had very strong mentors who have supported me making this career decisions, putting me on grants, helping me write. And I just think about the last fellowship round for the NHMRC that, you know, I'd put in four um, fellowships prior, prior, totally not su successful. Um, but with this one, I had, um, the opportunity to like shoot emails off to senior staff and be like, I'm not sure how to do or write up the stepped wedge situation and have them reply really quickly and say, here's my support, here's how I can support you. Lots of people reading it. Um, and just, I think having that belief in my ability to do it meant that I felt like I was not going into this space by myself. Um, I'm also not a clinician. And so working with some really strong clinical leaders in the health services, but also in our school has also meant that I start to understand this area a lot better and I feel like I have the confidence to go in even though I don't have a clinical hat.